President Trump finally calling the families of troops who lost their lives in the Niger raid and telling the widow of Sergeant LaDavid Johnson, quote, he knew what he signed up for. I want to bring in now Congresswoman Frederica Wilson. She spoke to Sergeant Johnson's widow tonight, and she joins us uh, on the phone. Uh, thank you, Representative, for, for joining us. You spoke to, to the widow of LaDavid Johnson, uh, Sergeant LaDavid Johnson. Her name is Maisha. Uh, how is she doing tonight? Oh, she's, she's very distraught, and uh, we were in the car together in the limousine headed to uh, meet the body at the airport. So I heard what he said because the phone was on speaker. What did he say? Well, basically he said, uh, well, I guess he knew what he signed up for. But I guess it still hurts. Hmm. That's what he said. The president said to her, uh, he knew what he signed he knew, up for. He knew what he was signing up for. But when it happens, it hurts anyway. Uh-huh. Yeah. So it's almost as if this is a young, young woman who has two children who is six months pregnant with a third child. She has just lost her husband. She was just told that he cannot have an open casket funeral, wow. which gives her all kinds of nightmares, how his body must look, how his face must look. And this is what the President of the United States says to her? The representative, as he we're has. speaking now, uh, we're looking at the video of her meeting the coffin there. She said she's expecting her third baby in January. She's leaning over that, that coffin with a flag draped uh, over his casket. Uh, you could see she was shaking there as she sobbed uncontrollably. She has a two-year-old son and a six-year-old daughter. Um, but continue on. What were you saying? And, and he had just told her that, just as she was uh, about to do what you just saw. Um, there's no reason for the president to be so insensitive, not only to the family of this soldier, but the impervious rhetoric is, you know, it's disrespectful to the family of every soldier that has paid the ultimate price for our freedom. And our community is livid because this was our hero. We don't have many heroes in our young men in Miami-Dade County, but he was a hero for us. And we don't like what was said. And that is not something that you say to a grieving wife. True. What was your reaction, Representative? I asked them to give me the phone because I wanted to speak with him. And I was going to curse him out. Yes. Yes. That was my reaction at that time. I was livid. She should have cussed him out. But they would not give me the phone. What did she say? She, just was, she was just crying. She couldn't say anything. The only thing she said when it was time to hang up was, thank you. Mm. Goodbye. Mm -mm -mm. And was, were there other family members in the car with you? Or there with yes, you? There, were, there were other family members in the car crying. What was their reaction? They were all crying. They were all crying. It was a solemn cry because they were still upset about the fact that this, this cannot be an open casket. They were upset because they don't know why he was separated from the rest of the soldiers. This could turn out to be another Benghazi. And I have asked for an investigation. Representative Hastings of Fort Lauderdale and I sent a letter, and we want to find out exactly what happened. And I'm expecting a classified briefing when I return to Washington to answer some of those mitigating questions that I can't answer on my own. 
Representative Wilson, thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you so much. And please give our, our thoughts and condolences to the family. Now, and I'll read it to you right now. The response uh, from the White House is basically that the president, here I have it in front of me now, the president's conversations with the families of American heroes who have made the ultimate sacrifice are private. Mm. So that's a very long way of saying no comment. To uh, pour salt in the wounds, but but look, th this is a difficult time for for the family, for our country, and certainly for the president. Could he have chosen his words better? Yes, but the fact is, these conversations are private. And I think if this had been a an in person meeting, the, it would have been a little bit better. You could have maybe you, they rushed it afterwards. I, I, call her in the car as I, she's about to. I, I, I think if you had the body language of an in person meeting, that would be a much much different story. And it's a very very difficult. I've been with Governor Huckabee, who has a pastor's heart, who's been in situations where we've had a school shooting, where we've had deaths and tornadoes. He has a pastor's heart. He is good with this. This is not the president's forte, and, and I think it's unfortunate given a time but like this. he is this, president of the United States. He certainly is, April, and this is just a difficult time, and is there a playbook for this kind of thing? There's absolutely not, but this is a time that right now, unfortunately, we're talking about this instead of honoring these brave heroes. And the, and the right words mm -hmm. need to be used. Hold on, I'm going to bring you gentlemen in. April, you okay, Bill? Because you sound like you're very emotional about this. I'm okay, Don. Okay. Jason, you're a former Army captain. In your opinion, here's what he sees. Is that he knew what he signed up for, but when it happens, it hurts. Um, is that acceptable way to speak to a widow? It's nauseating. Uh, but you died in action, and I have proof. Sad. But now, the fallen soldier's mother said the president disrespected her son. The question now, should we be politicizing something this personal and tragic? Joining me now, former CIA officer and president of Diligence LLC, Mike Baker. Uh, Mike, I would hey. like to believe this story is not true. Uh, I, I worry that there is enough of a kernel of truth to it that, you know, it, it's the kind of thing that hurts the president with veterans. And those well, serving yeah, in the look, military. This is, it's, it's yeah, it's it's disappointing and it's it's unfortunate that we're talking about this to begin with. Look, there is no more sad personal duty that a president has than to call the family or console the family of a fallen soldier. And so there's there's several layers to this. First of all, uh, it's it's a, it's unfortunate that this is now out in the open that we're talking about something this private. But can we believe that President Trump? Uh, may not be the most eloquent of all presidents we've had, and that this type of call, I mean, imagine yourself at a funeral home, you don't know what to say anyway in just daily life, or someone that you know loses a loved one, it's hard to have that conversation in private. Now you're the president, you're making this call, you're President Trump, who's known uh, to, again, not perhaps be the most eloquent. Is it possible that in his um, efforts to console the family, what he said was not uh, particularly Lincoln-esque? Uh, of course, that's a possibility, and it's something that should be held private between those families. That doesn't excuse what Representative Wilson did. She was essentially in the car, eavesdropping on one of the most painful moments a family can have, and she decided that she would politicize this, even though she says she's not politicizing. Of course she is, and it's disgusting. It's pathetic that she would come out in the open with this uh, moment between the president and and the family. The only person that has a right to do that would be a member of that family. Yeah, no, she, she certainly inserted herself into this, and, and she knew that her she comments did. were going to create a political firestorm. Mm. But what can the president do at this point? I don't know if he can make it right with his family. Uh, certainly he can learn from this going forward. And I'm sorry, this is one of those things that you don't need on-the-job experience uh, to know how to be an empathetic and sensitive human. Everybody brings to life a various levels of empathy. I mean, that shouldn't be a surprise to anybody. It doesn't mean, it, it, you know, you, you would like everyone to have a, a, a bottomless well of empathy, but that's not the way the world works, unfortunately. Look, 